brethren, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, where will you be? When the road is called in heaven and the books are open, will your name be there? I have a message for you from the Lord this Sunday morning. What shall be your hand? Shall we pray? I have delivered the message of the Lord to you this morning. Will you be justified by this message? Or will it stand against you as an evidence of the last day? The rapture is an inevitable event. The rapture could take place sooner than you expect. It would be a great disaster if you miss that glorious opportunity to fly away with the master. It would be a great loss indeed. Let us speak to our Father to grant us the grace to withstand the wind of iniquity that is blowing in our times. And let us pray that the master will grant us the grace to stand. About 12 years ago, when I was still a student in the university, my life was the perfect definition of waywardness. I was very bad. Drinking, smoking, partying, womanizing, and hooliganism were my favorite hobbies. I hardened my heart against the gospel and hated anyone who preached it. But one night I stumbled upon a program put up by a Christian fellowship in the university hall. A certain young man preached that night. The man preached for just about 15 minutes. By the time he ended, I was already in tears. I joined several others to respond to the altar call. I surrendered my life to Jesus that night. Praise God. Pastor, you were the young man who preached the message that transformed my life 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I thank you for saving my life. Thank you, sir. No, no. I didn't save your life. Jesus did. <laughs> uh, well, sir, I was impressed by the service in your church this morning. I am seriously challenged to discover that 12 years after I first met you, you are still consistent in your declaration of the undiluted word of God. Sir, you are wonderful. You are one in a million. <laughs> hey, brother Turiadi. Hey, brother Turiadi. Please, let's drop the encomium. Let's give all the glory to Jesus. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, sir, I watched your broadcast on TV yesterday. I mean, uh, truth on air. The program actually prompted me to be here this morning. And by God's grace, I have made up my mind to become a member of this church, along with my family members, when they eventually join me here in Lagos. <laughs> no, you can't do that. Why not, sir? Well, I want to believe you already have a place of worship here. And uh, I don't think you should abandon the place. Uh, we don't believe in snatching other church members here. We prefer to go out, make new converts, and disciple them for the Lord. If the church you are presently attending is a living Bible-believing one, please remain there. Sir, the truth is that I don't have a place of worship yet. In fact, I am new here in Lagos. I just, this is my first Sunday around here, sir. I was recently transferred down here from Port Harcourt. Okay, I see. I see. Good ambition. Eh? Ah. Hey. Just imagine my own son 
the son of Chief Donatus Gebo, expelled from the university for cult activities. He was also accused of fomenting trouble, exam practices, and attempting to rap a female student. And, and, and the fool came back home yesterday and lied to me that their school was on Miss Mr. Break. Hey! Marcos has, has, has ruined me. He has, he has ruined me. <laughs> By the way, where is the bastard? Marcos! 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 Hey, Paul. Why are you yelling? I'm not deaf, you know. Come on. Chill. Chill, man. Ah? Uh. Uh? Mom. Oh, Spock yelling like a diarrhea patient. Come on, tell him to mellow. Cool it, man. Ah. Marcos. <laughs> wow, man. This is bad. I'm now a national figure. Just imagine my name and picture prominently displayed on the front page of a popular national magazine. No, isn't this cool? <laughs> Are you too proud of me? <laughs> man. Linda must hear of this. This is the best thing that will happen to my political ambition. The Gabo has had it good all along. He has enjoyed to make just followership by the populace. His popularity and acceptability has grown geometrically in the last few weeks. I must confess, I was seriously threatened by his growing popularity at the point I even considered stepping down honorably. But with the news of his wayward son splashed on the face on the front page of the National Reporter, I believe the ship of uh, uh, Igebo's political ambition has finally hit the rocks. <laughs> you see, I can't contain my happiness. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, yes, I have uh, settled the editor, but I told him to see me as soon as I return to Lagos. I want to give him another friendly view, to keep an eye on the bad boy, and to feature more of his atrocities in his magazine. Ah, oh, I'm on my way. I'm catching the 10 o'clock flight. Uh, in the next five minutes, I should be out of this hotel room. In my position as the sales manager of this company, and yours as the store manager, I believe there should be a cordial working relationship between us. And what do you think? You are right, sir. Good. You see, I try not to step on people's toes. In the same vein, I don't take kindly to people stepping on my toes. Hmm? <laughs> That's all right, sir. He stepped on my toes yesterday afternoon. How, sir? And I was seriously hurt. Sir, what did I do? You gave this to me. You preached to me. You told me, except I am born again, I cannot see the kingdom of God. Mr. Toriadi, I decided to be quiet yesterday because I did not want to embarrass you in the presence of your junior workers. Moreover, I am being gentle with you because you are still new around here. You are just getting to know me. I beg you. Let this be the first and the last time you will preach to me. If you try it again, I won't hesitate to make you regret it. Hmm? in this Pastor Jonathan Akra. Sit down. Thank you, Pastor. Sir, 
I believe when you see the hand of God, you know it. Yes. Ha. The hand of God is very heavy upon the life of Pastor Jonathan. The last time I traveled to Nigeria to visit my in-laws, I attended a crusade where Pastor Jonathan ministered. The anointing that pervaded the atmosphere was so heavy, one could literally hold it. Thousands marched to the front to surrender their lives to Jesus. Several others received their miracles. I saw live miracles with my eyes. Later, when I got home, my father-in-law recounted so many other great miracles which God had used this man of God to wrought. I learned there was a particular day when this pastor went to an hospital to pray for a stroke patient. I learned the stroke patient who had been completely paralyzed in both hands and legs for about two months instantly regained the use of his hands and legs after Pastor Jonathan had prayed for him. And this is the big part of the testimony. On his way out of the hospital, Pastor Jonathan came across the dead body of a woman that was being stretched down the corridor to the mortuary. I learned the pastor was moved by the Spirit of God to pray for the dead woman. He prayed for her. The woman came back to life. She got off the stretcher and walked back home on her feet. This is interesting. Pastor, if we can bring this man of God to Ghana to minister at our annual convention, I believe that the whole church, indeed the whole of Accra, in fact, the whole of Ghana will not remain the same. Man. How is my son? He has improved tremendously. But for his healing to be perfect, we have to bat him with a special soap known as KK Miracle Soap. Go ahead, bat him with it. You have to pay 150,000 naira for the soap. Huh? Yes, because the soap is not available around here. We have to place a special order for it from Kakula Shrine in India. Can I see the boy? With your pleasure. See my boy. He will take you to the miracle room. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Sir, the choir director did not allow us to minister with the choir this morning. He said we have to see you to find out why. That's right. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit showed me a revelation concerning the two of you early this morning. The Holy Spirit told me that you were engaged in the sin of fornication on Thursday and that you did it again yesterday evening. Is the revelation true or false? Answer me. It, it is true, sir. No, no, let her talk. Yes, is it true? Yes, <sighs> And you wanted to stand in the presence of God to minister to His people with sin in your lives? You wanted to offer strength fire on his holy altar. You were not even afraid of the wrath of God. Ah. 
I am disappointed in the two of you. In any case, I still love you. I care so much about your spiritual well-being. And for this reason, you will have to face appropriate disciplinary actions. This will be made known to you at the service next Sunday. Good day. Young man, don't forget you are standing before the great Kakula. Mind the way you talk. I am repeating it. You are a dupe. You have collected over 100,000 Naira from me to kill my boy. You told me his condition has improved. When indeed he has become worse. He still barks widely like a rabbit dog. Is that what you call improvement? Now you now ask me, uh, you are now asking me to, to bring another 150,000 Naira to buy one useless soul from India. You are a bloody rogue. Look, I am going in there to move my son. But take note, you are not hearing the last from me yet. I'll be back to deal with you with appropriate force. Mr. Desmond, do you know what you are asking me to do? Yes, sir. I ask you to append your signature as the store manager. Mm. I see. Now listen, if I sign this and send it to you as the storekeeper, will you allow the goods to be moved out of the store? Yes, sir. Even when the GM has not signed? Yes. Once in a while, we release goods without the GM's signature. In as much as the sales manager and the store manager append their signatures, the former store manager understood the deal very well. Deal? Aha. Uh -huh. I now understand. You are trying to, you want to defraud the company. Fraud? Ah. No, far from it. In that case, let me keep this form. I will seal the gem with it tomorrow. Ah, okay? Please, if you won't sign the form, let me have it back. Please. It was the sales manager who asked me to bring it to you. Let me return it to him. Aha. So the sales manager knows about this. Hmm? I see. The two of you are playing a dirty game, and you want me to be a part of it? I'm sorry, you won't find a playmate in me. told me you've been waiting for the past five hours. Yes, Pastor. She said you were praying. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, Pastor. Please have your seat. Thank you, sir. Excuse me. Thank you, madam. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. What will God have me do for you? Uh, thank you, Pastor. I am Brother uh, Ben. Please. No, 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 no. Please have your seat. Uh, thank you, sir. Please feel free. Um, I am Brother Ben Owusu. A member of Revival Assembly, Accra, Ghana, where Pastor Joseph Ansa is the senior pastor. Sir, the church will be holding her 20th annual convention this year. The program will last for seven days. By God's grace, Reverend Alan Cottage, a man of God from the USA, uh, will minister for the first three days. Sir, the church will like to have you around to minister for the remaining four days. Um, my pastor asked me to give this letter of invitation to you. That's eight months from now. 
Yes, Master. I thought you would pass the night here with us. Uh, I would have loved to. But my in-laws live here in Vegas. I have to see them before I return to Ghana tomorrow morning. <laughs> Your wife is in Nigeria? Oh, yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. I see. That's interesting. <laughs> ah, extend my greetings to her. Yes, sir. Mm. Ah, please, can I be Madame Fiawal before I take my leave? Mm. Why not? My dear? In short, <laughs> Marcos became a thorn in my flesh. But about three weeks ago, my wife and I returned home after a political party convention. On our arrival, our housemaid informed us that Marcos had locked himself up in his room and that he had been weeping and groaning in there for over an hour. And when we eventually gained access into the room, Marcos opened up. Um, he said he had been watching a certain preacher on television and that it was the man's preaching that touched him and moved him to tears. He said he had prayed unto God for forgiveness and that he was ready to turn in a leaf. <laughs> I took his words with a pinch of salt because he had on several occasions made empty promises of turning a leaf. But on this occasion, <laughs> It had turned out to be worse. So, I decided to monitor him. <laughs> but it's now over two weeks since that episode, and I am now convinced beyond any reasonable doubt that Marcos is now indeed a changed person. He has plans to start a campaign against cultism on campuses. Mm -mm, wonderful. I praise God for that. The boy is now attending your church. He said you were the pastor that preached on television that day. Amen. Amen. I am here to thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for saving my reputation and political ambition. So we thank God. I want to express my gratitude with a token gift of just half a million naira. Please don't be offended. I know it's small, but I will do something better later. Um, I prepared the check from home, but I wasn't sure of which name to put on it. Um, can I write Pastor Jonathan Akram? Please hold on. Um, let's take first things first. Um, sir, have you given your life to Jesus? Oh, <laughs> of course. I have. I go to church. I spend for God and humanity. I try to live a life of high moral standard. I am a Christian. <laughs> a very good Christian. Sir, are you born again? You mean, am I a fanatical Christian? I mean, are you a child of God? Look, look, look. I don't believe in fanaticism. And please don't bother to persuade me to become born again. Now tell me, what name should I write on the check? <laughs> Sir, God is more interested in your life than in your money. You can forget about the check. You mean? The money you give to God without first giving Him your life has no reward whatsoever. Uh-uh. <laughs> you sound funny. <laughs> Why do you want him dead? Is it threat to my political ambition? How do you want him to die? Anyhow, but please don't leave any clue. That's not your problem. We are professionals at this job. Now, who is this man and where does he live? Is Pastor Jonathan Akran? Eh? Pastor?
Pastor Jonathan, that popular man of God, who? That hypocrite? He is not a man of God. He's a son of the devil. Hmm. What did he do to you? Is that important? No. I'm just curious. He's using his ill-gotten spiritual powers to improve Chief Gabor's political fortunes to my own detriment. He has even collected over a million naira from Igebo to campaign against me. And he has been doing just that on his weekly television program. Just this last Sunday, he used proverbs and parables to cause and abuse me on his program. Look, are you ready to do the job? Are you ready to pay the price? <laughs> How much? 1.5 million naira. <laughs> Just to kill him, man. Huh. Go ahead. Do it yourself. But you don't need more than a bullet to eliminate him. <laughs> we don't operate with bullets here. Just a minute. This is what we use for our operations. And what is this? A time bomb. <laughs> Specially imported from Russia. Each of these cost us a fortune. With this, there will be no clue at all. More so, I see this as a VIP assignment. I You need to say no more. I will pay. I will pay. Five hours should be enough time. Very well. 
him at home in that condition. Please let him remain here. I don't mind the cost. I'm afraid that won't be possible. His backing and growling has assumed an uncontrollable dimension. He is a nuisance to other patients. Worst of all, our most powerful sedatives no longer have any effect on him. Please, move him out of this place within the next one hour. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
45 minutes to go. same house with a boy who barks like a dog. I have to find a way out of this reproach. But what is the way out? Kill him. Kill him. Kill the boy. To make me murderer. I can do anything, but I can't kill. I don't have the guts to do it. So, oh. 30 minutes to go. Jonathan has just 15 minutes more to leave. Out of the car. Honey, why? What is it? There's no problem. God is in control. What is the problem? What is it, honey? It looks like a time bomb. Hey, Jesus! Get precious out of the car. Jesus! Hey. I will remove it. What are you trying? I, I will, I will remove it now. Just 30 seconds to go. Honey, honey, leave the place. Honey, leave it for God's sake. Leave it. Oh. Honey, leave 15, the place. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, How many 
many people can this place sit at a time? Um, <clears throat> about 5,000 people. Then how many services do you hold on Sundays? Well, just one. Meaning your membership strength is about 5,000? Um, not really. We are less than that. Just about uh, 4,000 members. <laughs> Incredible. Why? With your level of anointing, one expects your ministry to be the most outstanding in Nigeria. That's the impression we have of you over there in America. Personally, I expect your church auditorium to be an architectural masterpiece that can see tens of thousands of people at a time. But I must confess that I'm surprised at what I'm seeing and hearing. How do you mean? I thought you were more successful than this. But I think success in ministry is not a function of uh, fine physical structures or large church membership rank. Permit me to say you got it all wrong, Pastor Jonathan. You need proper orientation about ministry. Come on, let's go to your office. I'll give you some insights into how to have true success in ministry. Shall we? This way. Hey, bro. Is this your church watchword for the year? Oh, yeah, yeah. Holiness unto the Lord. <laughs> And what of last year? Um, a week to righteousness. And the year before? Um, yeah, um, remove not the whole landmark. Have you ever had such what was like an explosive breakthrough, supernatural dominion, all runs prosperity and stuff like that? You mean writing them boldly here? Yeah, yeah. I mean emphasizing it. No, no. But we preach them, especially from the point of view of righteousness and Christian integrity. We try as much as possible not to misplace our priority. You know, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Eh? <laughs> Pastor Junetta, we need to talk. Come on, let's go. I've been crying all day. What's the matter? I'm afraid. Afraid? Of what? What will become of our ministry? <clears throat> How do you mean? Look, honey. Ever since you met with your pastor friend from America about a month ago, you seem to have changed. Really? Mm. Yeah. I didn't notice that. But I did. I noticed it. Most members of the church have also noticed it. In fact, some have started grumbling and complaining. Mm. This is interesting. Grumbling and complaining that God is delivering us from the shackles of poverty and obscurity. Huh? No, honey. They are complaining that you have virtually shifted ground on the issues of sanctification and consecration. And I think they are right. Honey, I think they are right. I'm even tempted to agree with them. And I, 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 I even agree with them. Ah, this is really interesting. You agree with them? All right. We'll address everything at the service on Sunday. It has come to my knowledge that some members of this church do not understand the new move of the Spirit of God in this church. I am not surprised because even some of the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ did not fully comprehend his ministry while well on earth. 
I'd like to repeat it for the often time that this church has entered into a unique era of supernatural breakthrough. Hear me? I just said that this church has entered into a new realm of explosive breakthrough that will catapult us into the realm of supernatural. the multi-million marijuana building project has received a boost of 10 million US dollars. The donation is coming from a child of God in Paraguay, America. I'd like to encourage you to redeem your pledges without any delay. Yes. By the grace of God, we are committed to marking the 12th anniversary of the new of, of this ministry in the new auditorium country. Yes. What are you up to? I'm cutting down this tree. But why? I've been tending this tree for so many years now. And it has refused to be like the other trees here. Look. 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 But it is bearing fruit. Plenty of fruit. What else do you want? From me, precious tree. It has no leaves like the other trees. It's not as big, as prominent as other ones. I will cut it down and plant another one instead. <laughs> but you are not the one. Who planted this tree in the first place? It was only put in your care. If you are tired of tending it, Leave it for another place. I don't know the meaning. But I believe it was not an ordinary dream. It's a revelation and we need to ask God for the interpretation. I know the interpretation. God has already shown me the same revelation twice. But you never told me. Mm, it's not that serious. The tree in the revelation stands for the forces of darkness against our ministry. While the elderly man who asked me not to cut down the tree stands for the devil. Mm -hmm. well, I'm sorry about what happened the last time. <laughs> I knew you will come back. The great Kakula told me so. Are you now ready to pay the money? Yes. I'll get it by all means. You have to pay an additional 20,000 naira. Making a total of 170,000 naira. The additional 20,000 naira is what we call the introduction fee. It is 10,000 naira for every month of silence. You know your son has been moved away from this place for two months now. We have to reopen his case file before the great Kakula with the money. Coming. It will be 
here in a moment. But, Oga, he seems to have an idea of what you want to see him for. Don't worry. I know how to handle him. I will promise him a considerable percentage of the money while you and I will share the remaining accordingly. I am sure he will not refuse the offer. He will play ball with us. What if he refuses? Refuse such a fat amount? His salary for a whole year is not up to what he will make in a day if he dances to our team. What if he is deaf to our team? Then, I will believe he is indeed a true Christian. I swear, that will be enough to convince me to also become born again. Look, he cannot refuse the offer. <laughs> we are talking of money, big money. Yes, come in. Mr. Desmond. Ah, oh, Mr. Toriadi, come right in. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. I sent for you. Now, it's been four months since the company paid our salaries last. I'm sorry, I'm just being curious. How have you been coping all along? I mean, financially. His grace is sufficient for me. For all I know, I can't steal and I won't steal. Sir, I have a message for you from the Lord. Wow! I think I know what the message is. You do? I think so. What is the message, sir? Uh, let me hear the message from you. You know, you are the prophet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you, sir. Um, the Lord said I should see you concerning the money you offered to Donith for his work about two months ago. The Lord said I should collect the money from you. You mean the 500,000 Naira? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, but you can hurt more if you so wish. I'm afraid I don't have such an amount of money on me. You know the elections are so close by. I have virtually emptied my bank accounts on the campaigns. Um, no problem, sir. You can make a pledge. What does that mean? Um, you can promise to donate the money as soon as you have it. Is it that serious? And uh, by the way, is that the message you said you have for me from God? Yes, sir. Hey, uh, what else? That, nothing more, sir. Nothing more. Um, there seems to be a mix-up somewhere. You see, uh, early this morning, I had this strange feeling of emptiness and hopelessness within me. I felt like giving up. Since then, I have been having this strong desire to have somebody tell me how to have peace of mind. So I was excited when you came in. I was more excited when you told me you had a message for me from God. I was thinking you were going to ask me to become born again. But you came with a different message. Uh, no, no, it's part of it, sir. It's part of it. Uh, sir, are you ready to become born again now? <laughs> <laughs> you don't sound as serious as you sounded when you first asked me the same question two months ago. Uh, I think you are now more interested in my money uh, than my life. Ah, uh, I know, sir. It's a... Uh, um, Pastor, um, what is this your name again? Uh, I think you should take your name. Now. receive your own share before we close tomorrow.
I told you. I told you. <laughs> hey, he signed it. <laughs> I told you. There are no Christians anywhere. They are all hypocrites. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> hey, this is wonderful. <laughs> How much is that? 170,000 naira. Put it on the floor. Your son will be completely healed. You need the next seven days. You can go. You can go. I'm afraid. I don't have the courage to spend this money. I feel like a sinner. Oh my God. What can I do? Yes. I know what to do. I know what to do. Sir, the last time you spoke in church about our pledge towards the building of the new church auditorium, I was seriously challenged. I prayed to God to surprise me. Sir, the Lord surprised me with a miraculous provision yesterday. No effort, no stress. <coughs> Sir, this is my time. Of the miracle supply. Actually, sir, I made a pledge of 50,000 naira towards the building project, but I am redeeming the sum of 150,000 naira. I promise to add more as the Lord provides. Amen. Let us pray. Immortal King of Kings, the great provider, we thank you. We bless your name for this divine provision. And because your son has faithfully sown his substance into your kingdom, oh God, bless him in return. Amen. Jonathan asked him to tell you exactly how he got the money. His hands are not clean. Do not collect the money. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother Turiadi. Sir. The Spirit of the Lord just ministered to me now. The Lord said he was the one who opened the door of divine favor for you. Amen. And he said, because you are faithfully sown into his kingdom, he will open more doors for you. Amen. He said, the windows of heaven will never be shut against you. Amen. He said, many more miracles will come your way before the end of this year. Amen. He said, whatever you lay your hands upon shall prosper. Amen. He said, your ways shall please him all of the time. Amen. The great Kapula says your son's case is impossible. That is to say, he can never be healed. Eh? No problem. Refund my money and let me take him away. Which money? The money I gave to you for his treatment. 270,000 naira so far. When did we collect the money from you? Huh? When did you collect for me? When did you collect 270,000 naira from me? Hey, look, look, look. Don't crack jokes with me. Oh. Huh? <laughs> Do I look like a joker? We never collected any money from you. Huh? If we did, we are the receipts we issued to you when we collected the money. We only offered to assist you to heal your boy free of charge. That's all. 
If you have any case against us, please go and report us to the police. success as a man of God over the years and uh, I'm quite impressed and I would like you to join my political campaign team as a spiritual advisor and uh, what will be my duty uh, advising me praying for my success at the forthcoming election promoting me in your church in your crusades and your television programs. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't do that. Uh, okay, I know why. You are already indebted to Chief Gabriel. No, far from it. I have no business with him. But why are you turning down my request? Sir, I am a man of God. I promote Jesus, not people. Well, well, uh, that's all right. That means I have to forget what I intended to do. What is that? I intended to donate a sum of uh, five million naira to your church and uh, a sum of two million naira to you personally. In addition, I wanted to release my fully furnished unoccupied mansion at Victoria Garden City for your use, free of charge, for as long as you wish. In any case, I will report to members of my campaign committee that you are not willing to join us and that you have rejected all the offers. I have not said that. <coughs> Sir, where and when does the committee meet? The committee meets between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. on Tuesdays in the banquet hall of this hotel. That is the exact time and day we meet in my church for Bible studies. And I am supposed to be there. Uh, but you can delegate one of your pastors to handle that. Um, no problem. I'll see what I can do about that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. A revelation? Yes, sir. Go on. I'm all ears. Thank you, sir. Sir, in the revelation, I saw a procession made up of many people marching along a deserted street. You were right in the front, followed by four able-bodied men in uniform. They were carrying a coffin after you. A band of boys, brigade, drummers, and trumpeters followed the coffin bearers. And in the rear, I saw a big crowd made up of well-dressed men and women. Everybody in the procession, including you, was rejoicing and dancing. 
to the miss it produced by the Virgin Mart. <sighs> After a while, an elderly man came in from the other hand and asked where you were leading the people to. You said, to the cemetery of us, that you were going to bury a dead person. The elderly man later told you that the person in the coffin was not dead, that you are going to bury a living person. He later asked, do you know what you are doing? To which you responded angrily. You said, hey, Hedo, don't insult me. If I don't know what I'm doing, what about this multitude singing and dancing after me? Had they also out of their minds? Look, don't intrude into my fears. Is that understood? You then let out a long hiss, after which you continued to dance and led the procession on towards the cemetery. The elderly man then looked at you pitifully before making a final remark. And he said, Ah, this man is going to bury his ministry alive. The revelation ended, and I came back to reality. <laughs> Brother Matthias. No, oh, sir. Was that all you saw? Yes, sir. I, I've prayed about it. Then why did you decide to come and tell me? Oh. Sir, I couldn't bear the body in hello. That's all right. Thank you. Thank God, sir. Uh, I'm taking my leave, sir. You're welcome. Bye bye, ma. Oh, Brother Martins. Yes, ma. You're set to me? Yes, ma. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye bye, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma. My dad is Mr. Beatrice. Yes, ma. God bless you. Bye bye. Ma. Bye. Honey, you're not disturbed. Honey, is anything the matter? When did that boy become born again? Who? Brother Martins? Mm -hmm. It was sometime last year. Why do you ask? He had the guts to come in here and tell me that I am backsliding. And that my ministry will soon die. Uh, he said that. This small voice. You are indeed a blessing to this generation. God used you to change my ministerial fortune. I can never forget the day you sat me down and gave me a detailed teaching on how to make it a ministry. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We hope to complete it within the next few months. Yeah. No. Nigeria? God forbid. <laughs> the design was done by Salvini K. Salvini, a Roman architect, and one of the best architects in the world today. The architectural design alone cost us about 10 million naira. Yeah. <laughs> when the building is completed, it's going to stand out as one of the best church auditoria in the whole world. Even those of you in America will come down to Nigeria here to see wonders. Yes! Uh. Thank you, my daughter. You're welcome, ma. I've not been able to come here. To congratulate you on your new accommodation since you moved in here. I'm really sorry. It's okay. Thank you, ma. Yeah. My daughter, I'm here to discuss a matter with you. Okay. The matter has brought tears to my eyes on several occasions. 
What is it now? Your husband, the pastor. He has changed. His focus has changed. His priority has changed. He has abandoned his original vision of raising saints and preparing them for heaven. Our beloved pastor has joined the bandwagon of materialistic preachers. He no longer preaches on repentance, holiness, restitution, consecration, integrity, and the likes. It is now prosperity, dominion, breakthrough, anointing for this, anointing for that. This gets me wrong. There is nothing wrong with messages like this. Because God wants us to prosper and to live in dominion. But when one now dwells so much on the minor at the expense of the major, then there is a big problem my hand. Some of them are complaining. Yeah. I'm not bothered. I'm not. The problem with our people is that they are too rigid. They are too short-sighted. Their own motto is, as it was in the beginning, so is it now, and ever shall be, world without end. They shy away from positive changes. It's unfortunate. I've gone through a series of personal fasting and prayer retreats, just to intercede for the restoration of our pastor. I just consider it necessary to speak with you as his wife. I believe you should know the best way to approach him. Please, feel free to mention my name. Tell him all I said. And if it becomes necessary, I'm willing to speak with him personally. My daughter, please, help us beg Pastor, beg him not to fall. Mm -hmm. If he falls, it will be a great fall, and many will fall with him. I don't have a wife. This boy killed her. He stabbed his mother to death with a table knife. That was in the early days of his strange sickness. Mm. Who directed you here? One of my neighbors, a member of your church. She said you have the power to kill my boy. Please, Pastor, help me. <clears throat> you have to make a vow. Vow. What will you do if God heals your son? I promise to serve him with my whole life. And your money too? Yes, sir. Go and bring the boy. I command you to get out of this body. I say, get out of him in the name of Jesus. Get out. You evil spirit. You are a stranger in this body. I command you to get out in Jesus' name. I said, get out in Jesus' name. Hey, Jonathan. You are not qualified to do what you are trying to do. Leave me alone. The Bible says, whatever I bind on her shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever I lose on her shall be loosed in heaven. Therefore, I bind and I cast you out of this body in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you? You? You want to cast me out whereas the spirit of mammon resides inside of you? You are a bastard. I come against you with the authority of the Holy Ghost in me and I command you to get out in Jesus' name. Get out! Mm. 
much that was once upon a time. You no longer have the authority. I said, get out. Get out. In Jesus' name. Hey, Jonathan, you have been bothering me for the past four hours. I have no respect for you at all. But I will respect the powerful name you have been using to bind me. I will get out of it. But take note, when I leave this place, I won't go into the ocean. I won't go into the desert or into the bottomless pit. I will enter right into you. I will torment you. I will kill you. I will kill you. You lie. I said you lie. Just get out. Just get out in Jesus' name. Get out. All right. All right. I will leave. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Daddy. Thank you. Thank you. Daddy. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I think it's high time I let these people know. Anyone who is not comfortable with this new move of the Spirit of God in the church can as well leave. I will not tolerate backbiting, mud slinging, and idle talks. No, I won't. Imagine, just imagine that widow coming here to tell you that I have lost focus. Despite all that the church has been doing for her ever since she lost her husband two years ago. She's an ingrate. Honey, that's not the point. That's not the point, Honey. Listen. Yes. Uh, I'm Sergeant Shegun Areoye. Yes. What can I do for you? Your attention is needed in our station. My attention. I'm a pastor. Do you know? Yes. Pastor Jonathan Accra. Hmm? Please, come with us. Do you know this man? Yes, I do. He's a deacon in my church. Have you ever collected any money from him? Yes, he pays his tithes and offers into the church. Has he ever given you any monetary gifts? I mean to you personally. Yes. How much? Two million naira. Hmm? No, sir. 2.5 million naira. I give him 1.5 million naira a week after I joined his church. Two weeks later, he ordained me a deacon, after which I give him another 1 million naira to express my gratitude. Is that true? Yes, I made a mistake. I should believe so. Men of God don't tell lies. Now, do you know what your deacon does for a living? He's a businessman. What kind of business? I don't know. Why not? <laughs> I didn't ask him because I, I didn't want to embarrass him. Well, I hope you won't be embarrassed to know that your deacon is an arm robber. As a matter of fact, he is the grandmaster of a ruthless gang of seven bad men. We stood on his gang during a robbery attack on the bank yesterday. The deacon was one of those arrested. On interrogation, he made a confessional statement that you normally share out of their notes whenever they return from their operations. Huh. 
which makes you an accomplice in their crimes. Ah. What is that supposed to mean? You have a case to answer. In the meantime, you have to remain in our custody. Ah, officer, my husband is a man of God. He's a pastor. He's not a criminal. Yeah. Officer. Leave that for your lawyer to prove in the law courts. Ah, officer. I never knew. I never knew he was an arm robber. I never knew. How come? I think as a man of God, you should have the Holy Spirit inside of you. Hey, the Holy Spirit should have revealed the secrets to you. Perhaps the Holy Spirit did, but you didn't hear him. Or you heard him but pretended not to, just because of the blood money this criminal was dishing out to you and your church. There are many other careless, undiscerning pastors like you in our churches today. They lose their sense of decorum and forget all about Christian integrity when they see money. It's a shame. Sergeant, Ezra, lock them up in the cell. Ah, officer. Oh, God. Come Jesus in. Christ. Ah, officer, please. Ah, God, don't let this happen to me. Hey, Come Jesus in. Christ. Officer, please. Please, officer. Ah. <laughs> Ah, officer, please. Ah. Yes. Come in. Yes, sir. What is this? Something is wrong with that man. Which man? The pastor. He just began to bark like a dog. He has seriously wounded two of the inmates with his teeth. What is that supposed to mean? In which cell is he? He's in the main cell. Hey, this is no joke. Contact is people who are listening to them on bail. Yes, sir. The police has now a ruthless gang of armed robbers which has been unleashing a reign of terror on banks within and around Lagos State for quite some time. The police took on the gang during a robbery attack on Basic Trust Bank yesterday. Four members of the gang were killed during a fierce gun battle with the police. Two were arrested while the other one escaped with serious gunshot injuries. The renowned man of God, Pastor Jonathan Akram, was also implicated in the series of crimes committed by the armed robbers. He was later picked up by the police after the leader of the gang had mentioned his name as an accomplice in their crimes. Pastor Jonathan was alleged to have been offering special prayers of protection for the armed robbers in exchange for monetary rewards. In the meantime, the police has granted the pastor bill based on personal recognition. The bill came as an aftermath of a stress sickness which the pastor developed while in police custody. Meanwhile, the three armed robbery suspects are billed to appear in court on Wednesday next week. He's been Mayowa Folaji reporting for Hayam TV. It's nice meeting you again, sir. How are you? Thank you. Here you meet my pastor, mm. Pastor Joseph Ansa. Ah, oh, you're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. How are you? Thank you. Sir, I feel very honored to see you face to face. We've heard so much about you and your ministry back there at home. Your books, video, and audio tapes has been of great benefit to brethren in Ghana. I wish to submit 
without any attempts to flatter you, that you are a blessing to this generation. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Brother Ben was supposed to come all alone to remind you about our forthcoming convention. But I consider it better to come with him. Sir, the entire city of Accra is seriously agog in anticipation of the great miracles which the Lord will perform through you during the convention. Amen. And we heard about your new auditorium, which is presently under construction. I learned the building promises to be the largest church auditorium in Africa. No, no. Um, in the whole world. Mm -hmm. The largest in the whole world. Um, it's been handled by uh, a building engineer, an expatriate building engineer from Germany. Um, the design was done by Salvini K. Salvini, a Roman architect. <laughs> Thank God for your life. Uh, I've not met a highly favored woman who married this admitted man of God. <laughs> Can I meet your wife? Oh, um, she's not here. She went out for shopping. She will be... Pastor? <coughs> Sir? <coughs> is there anything the matter? <coughs> Something is wrong with me. No. Not just something. Everything is wrong with me. Why do I bark like a dog? What kind of sickness is this? I, I have prayed about it. But it refused to go. I can't stand any more of this shame. I've reported it. It's a case of food poisoning. Madam, who prepared your husband's breakfast on the day of the incident? I did. Did you eat out of it? Yes, I did. At the same time your husband ate his own? No. Why not? We don't usually eat breakfast together on Saturdays. Why not? He doesn't eat till around noon. Meanwhile, I normally go for weekend shopping on Saturdays. So as usual, I ate my breakfast with my little daughter, Precious, and I served his own breakfast on the dining table before leaving for the supermarket with my daughter, Precious. Do you have an house help? No. Who else lives in the house with you? You mean in the main building? Mm-hmm. 
nobody. Just Pastor, our three children, and I. The two children are in, in the boarding house. The first two children are in the boarding house. It is only the last one that stays with us. Does anybody stay in your boys' quarters? Yes, Chidi, our gates man. Does he enter the main building? Hardly. And that is when he invited or when he ushers in a visitor. Hmm. That means an outsider couldn't have poisoned your husband's mail. It must be an inside job. Ha! Huh. Somebody very close to your husband poisoned him. And from the look of things, you are the closest to him. Officer, what are you insinuating? Can I poison my husband? No. I'm not insinuating anything. I'm only trying to find out something. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> yes. Come <laughs> We have made some progress. Ah. And the most important witness in this case is ready to speak. Yes, sir. Uh, we shall soon arrive on the mystery surrounding the person of Pastor Jonathan Agra. <laughs> <laughs> I discovered I have lost my integrity as a minister of God. <laughs> my name has become synonymous with shame and reproach. I no longer hear the voice of God. He no longer speaks to me. All of a sudden, I found myself within the association of abandoned ministers. Oh my God. Ministers who are still living but their ministries are dead. When people now talk about me, they start with once upon a time. Oh God. My good testimony has become a thing of history. Hey, Mom. To make matters worse, I developed a strange sickness that beat me back like a dog. Hey, God. The anguish and pain has become too much for me to bear. Oh, oh, oh. I couldn't stand it any longer. <laughs> so I poisoned myself. I I don't know what pushed me. Ah. Why? <laughs> the poison has done so much effort to his system. <laughs> Only a miracle can save him. Hey. Doctor, <laughs> please, please. Ah. God has been so good to me. He called me. He chose me. And lavished his grace upon me. But I have frustrated the grace of God upon my life. Oh my God. Oh my God.
Outside, you can be forgiven. 